This is Matt Boxberger. So for the first minute of this video, I'll display the table of contents here. You can see the layout, and this is the timeline. So it's 40 minutes, and if there's parts of this you're already familiar with, you can just skip ahead to the parts you want to start at and as well if you want to come back to the beginning of this and uh, zero in or, or repeat a certain topic you can just come back here you can just pull the slider as you're watching this on YouTube back to the start so to keep the timeline in sync I've got this displayed for one minute and then after that we'll launch into my lecture so thank you again and uh, hopefully this is a helpful uh, helpful tool for you This is Matt Boxberger. So this lecture is the last of our modules on order fulfillment. And so if you're watching this on YouTube, let me show you in case you hadn't seen how to get the screen bigger so you can some, see some more detail on, on the screen. So if I pop over here to, to YouTube and you found it this way and you're watching uh, here in your browser window, uh, it may not be too big and, and you know you can't see stuff so well so down here uh, you can click this to make it a a larger player or this to get the the full screen and so then uh, I've recorded so these in high def and I'll pause myself there but then you'll be able to see a lot more detail and then you can see down here you can uh, click this again to exit full screen or to go back to the, the smaller player. So uh, that's just a tip then as we get started on this. So now let's go ahead and go over to the order fulfillment section. We'll have three major parts to this module. First of all, I'll cover some basic steps on, on getting ready, uh, the one-time things you've got to do to get set up and, and ready to do the, uh, the order fulfillment. And then the second part will be on getting your order, either entering it yourself or pulling up an order that's already been uh, preloaded for you to work on. And then finally, in the third part of the, the module, actually walking through generating the order and working with the forms that are generated. So to start with, let's talk about the Chrome browser. And if you don't have it yet, how you'll get it. So if you're using the standard Internet Explorer browser that came with your computer and haven't downloaded the Chrome browser, you'll need to do that. There's some features uh, that just won't work in Internet Explorer, and you'll bump into those fairly quickly in Validix, the mapping program, and certainly the, uh, the order fulfillment piece that we're going to look at today uh, uses some features of Chrome that, that aren't in the Internet Explorer. Mozilla Firefox is more similar to Chrome and may work okay, but you know, to eliminate any problems, it's better if you go ahead and get Chrome. So if you don't have it yet, you can just click chrome.com as uh, the address here, and that'll take you to the, the Google page, and it will give you this option to to download it. You can click here, uh, you know, read through their terms. Uh, if you want to make Chrome your default browser, you can click this on or off. Uh, I use it as my default and I like to send in the crash information if that happens. So I'll click this and it's going to be probably fairly standard uh, kind of process as you've seen if you've uh, downloaded and installed other software. It's got some information here and so it'll, uh, it'll bring this up, uh, check the PC, bring down the, uh, the dialog box and then you'll just be able to click OK or accept, kind of look through the uh, the questions as they come up here. Uh, yes, we'll run it and then it'll pull this down and, uh, and get started. And so you'll walk through those steps. That should be fairly fairly standard. And then, then once you've got uh, Chrome here, we'll move on to the next step. So I'll go ahead and pause this and we'll, we'll hop ahead to, to the Chrome browser.
Okay, so now I've got the the Chrome browser, and this is the icon here, the little circle with the uh, the red, green, and yellow. Um, I'm on the uh, the ZDS site here. Um, I'm using Windows 7. If you're using XP, things will look a little bit different, but hopefully. Uh, We'll still be able to follow along okay. Um, one other thing here, just in terms of the uh, the the basics, um, I'm on the the main web page. You can go to support.zonedatasystems.com, and this has the uh, the place. If you're having technical difficulties, you can open a support request here. It's also got the download, so you can download the documents we've put together, the training stuff, tutorials, the the latest version of the, the ready tool and so on. So that's here on the support section. So now once you've got Chrome, if you haven't done it yet, you need to make a change to the default PDF viewer. And that's because the uh, the tool we use to fulfill orders uses the Adobe uh, tool and so you'll need that rather than the the standard uh, Chrome one and so to get there this is one where there's not a, a menu choice you've got to uh, actually just type this in Chrome colon slash slash plugins so you'll type that up here and it'll bring you to this page it says I've got 25 plugins so right now the Chrome PDF viewer here is the one that's being used and this gray bar down here the Adobe Acrobat one is not being used we need to switch that around so we'll click enable here and it's always allowed and that's what we want and that automatically turns this Chrome PDF viewer gray and so this is a one-time deal you'll want to set that and then you shouldn't have problems now the other thing that I want to show with Chrome that you may have seen before is this uh, steps to clear the cache. The cache is files and pieces of information or forms that are are downloaded in advance or kept so that your browser performs faster. But sometimes uh, new pieces won't get fully downloaded or something may get corrupted and so if you're seeing strange behavior forms that don't look right or uh, you know a form that won't even even print or fill in uh, and we'll we'll see that as we look at the uh, the orders you, you'll probably as the first troubleshooting step want to try this clearing the cache and so you can do that up here with this little wrench uh, that's going to be in the upper right on your Chrome browser and you click on that and then you come down here to the history selection and click on that that's a standard left click with your mouse that's going to bring up this screen and the clear all browsing data button up here is what we're going to want to click it's going to bring up this box uh, when it first comes up I think all four of these are checked I like to keep the the cookies because that's got some uh, settings and passwords and stuff that I don't want to have to keep typing in download history is just a list of the files you've downloaded and the browsing history the list of sites you visited the the key one although you can clear those if you want the key one is this cache and that that's the the files that uh, you really can't see but are, are working behind the scene and you want to say uh, delete those from the beginning of time so you'll get a fresh set of those files pulled down so it, it may take a little bit longer to generate a form for example the first time you do this but that uh, can eliminate problems if you're seeing them. So I'll hit the uh, clear browsing data. And so now we've that demonstrated that. So now uh, let's go ahead and look at the sites we'll be working on uh, as we fulfill orders. So you've probably already been on Validix uh, at doing the work leading up to getting the zones balanced. I've got this set as a uh, as a bookmark here and if you don't have it yet the first time you type in the address politics.zeo.com slash politics slash login you can just grab this and drag it down here and put it on your your favorites bar and so I've got my password manager there and I'll go ahead and sign in here um, so you saw the the silver screen and you know Validix will take you to your standard map page um, there's also the UAT, the user acceptance testing server, and 
that's one that uh, you can use to, to play around in a sandbox, if you will. If you uh, do something wrong there, there's no uh, nothing permanent uh, that happens because each weekend, as I understand it, they'll take a, a fresh copy of the data, all the information you've got in the, the production system, and put that over on the UAT server and overwrite whatever's already there. And so that address is uat.zao.com. Uh, the login screen is going to look different. We'll get the... Uh, so that, that'll that tell you you're starting on UAT, but you've got to watch out because after this, uh, the screens are going to look the, the same. And so you want to keep an eye up here on your address bar to make sure uh, if you're doing things for real that you're in the production system or if you just want to test something that you're in the, the UAT system. So uh, we're logged in now and to fulfill orders we've got to sign them in in Validix in the Chrome browser here and to do that you've got to load a signature file. And so if you haven't done that before that's going to be over here to the right on this first menu, the black menu bar. You'll come over and click on your name and user settings. So the one user setting right now is a signature. I've got mine in, but if not, it would have a box here that would say no signature or load signature. And to do it, it's going to look fairly similar to what, what you may have done with working with files before. We'll choose a file and we'll submit it. And so I'll go to the section where I've got my signature file, and it's a JPEG star.jpg to show them all. Uh, and hopefully you've done this for your regular appraisal software, but you'll need to, to scan uh, your signature. And um, so say that I made a mistake here and chose an incorrect file and said, oops, didn't want that. So, Or in the future, if I needed to uh, update my signature, then I could uh, could go ahead and do that here and select this and submit it. And so that's how that's going to work. And then once I've done, I can click back, 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 and oops, get back here to, uh, to where I was starting from. So again, that's a one-time step to, uh, to get your signature in and set up in Validix. So now the second part of this module is uh, getting your order and getting started and fulfilling it. And so that's in the Orders tab here. Now there's two ways that orders can come in. Either they can be preloaded or you can put them in yourself. This Place an Order button here will allow you to do that. So if you've got a local client you want to demonstrate this to or just to, uh, to play with the system, uh, you can you can place orders here and uh, and then fulfill those. So let me show you how that works. So we'll click this place an order button, and so there's three steps: find the address, place the order, and then you'll get the uh, the order confirmation. Uh, so the, first of all, we'll we'll find the address, and so the the one I'm going to look for is 3238 Sagewood Lane. Now. Uh, I'm going to put drive and I'm going to leave off one of the street numbers here. San Jose CA. If you're way off, it'll search and tell you that it can't find anything. I think that's what's going to happen. Sorry, your search returned no results. Well, then if I realized it's not Sagewood Drive, it's Sagewood Lane, but I still didn't have the full street address here. Now it's uh, it's saying, okay, we know Sagewood Lane, and here are some properties that have a 323 in it. Here's the one I wanted, and so I can click that, and that'll take me over. If I had uh, typed it in correctly right from the start and hit search, and it was a perfect match, it would take us automatically to step two, place an order. So on this tab, you can see the asterisks, the stars, by the fields that you have to put in. Uh, so if we're doing a test, we can skim through these fairly quickly. If you're doing it for a local client, you'll want to go ahead and type that in so it'll look nice for them. Here's the key uh, 
selection here, this drop down. So Z vowels are the shortest uh, report, and we'll do one of those. The uh, Service Link 2055Z kit is the other one we'll demonstrate. These others, the Zavo, Wells Fargo, Desktop, and Retrospective, those are some works in progress that are in there. But uh, for now, let's say we're going we're gonna to enter this Z vowel. And again, this uh, I don't have to have uh, this. If I don't care, I can just put in anything. It doesn't even have to be numbers for the, the number fields. Uh, just put in anything to get started if you want. And now I'll hit Submit Order, and that should take us to Step 3, Order Confirmation. So it's put in order number 439. And so if I've got multiple zones, uh, it'll put it into the right zone. So now we're ready to generate a report. And so this is our list of orders, and this is the one that I want to work on here. So I'll hover over it, and with the left mouse, click, and it'll give me these options. I can go straight to generate the report if I've been actively working in the zone, have everything uh, balanced and up to date. If I'm not sure or want to take a little more look at it, I can use this one to look at the specific property, uh, this one to look at the uh, the comps, and this one to uh, actually do the uh, the balancing if we need to, to update the, the market. So uh, we can go here first and double check. And as you can see, uh, March is the last time this one had comps uh, balanced, and we're at June. So we want to do the kind of balancing that you've seen uh, in the previous courses, and I've got some June and May sales. And so I'll go ahead and do that here, and I'm going to pause this as I do that, and then we'll resume after I do the balancing. Now, after I've done that, if I want to go and look at this particular property, my subject, I can click here, the property detail, and uh, see the, the basic description. The scoring is where I'm probably going to want to spend my time. And so right now uh, you can see this is the scoring I've got in the predicted value. Now on this one, since it's a pending sale, I'm going to open up the MLS, which I've done, and see that it's extensively remodeled and so that's going to move my condition up to an 8 and it looks like it's got quite a bit of work done in the backyard as well so I'm going to move my extras also up to an 8 and again uh, it moved up from 520 to 540 and now when I do this it's going to be 588 uh, again based on this uh, opinion of influence $10,000 per uh, level of difference in the extras. And if I'm satisfied with that, I'll go ahead and s hit Save Change. And so now I'm back here. Um, the, um, the other thing I want to show you then is for the, uh, for the market group here. We'll click Market Balance. And uh, for this uh, market, we can check to make sure we've got the the details set right in terms of uh, the neighborhood characteristics and if there's any of this uh, that's not right or needs to be updated we can take care of that and I'll go ahead and do a couple of those things now and I'll pause. For example here in the Silicon Valley the market is getting pretty hot and so uh, literally it's it's less than three months on almost all the sales and we'll say that there's a, a, a shortage right now uh, in terms of properties that are available. And this one I didn't have the boundaries in, so I can go ahead and type that. So once I'm satisfied with this and can review everything here, then I'll go ahead and hit Save Market Details, and then can go back again here to the order. And once I'm satisfied I've got everything ready, we'll go ahead and click Generate Report. Now this step will take a few minutes, um, and there's not always any kind of progress indicator. Uh, and here we go. So I had not, after I um, 
updated the comps, hit modified live. And so this would say, all right, I don't have enough comps uh, or haven't uh, updated the uh, the market within the last six weeks. So I'll have to, to go back and do that then. So I'll pop back here and you can see I um, I selected some newer comps here and got those gold scored and now I'll click the, the Make Modified Live. Um, I hadn't yet set uh, my pop-up blocker to allow that and so I can click that and then the pop-up that was blocked is this QA Alerts and so we'll go ahead and take a look at this as you've seen before when you do the uh, the balancing we'll review those QA rules okay and so I've got a standard kind of informational warning uh, there's three properties in that uh, market group out of a thousand that aren't bracketed by the sales prices and so I can go ahead and click the, uh, the override in a standard comment there and then once I'm set with that close the window and now the the markets modified live and we can go on back and hopefully successfully generate this uh, this is eval so again we'll have a little bit of a wait here and here we go so you can see if you've worked in this before that the the save and sign have been moved up here to the top left before they were down by the signature and you also saw this little uh, menu which is for Adobe pop up here you will be able to save to the the server and and sign and save it to the uh, the Zeo server but if you want to copy on your desktop you can use this icon to save it after you've gone through and updated things or to print it out uh, it's the same menu bar as up here so you've got these options as well in this part of the menu bar so let's go ahead and go through this um, here's our client and we can uh, walk through and make sure everything's here and if there's something that's not here like census tract we can put that in and this is in fares but it's not being mapped currently if I want to put it in manually I can look it up on my public records data source and put that in as 505044.11 not sure why I had to click uh, twice there but anyway I've got that and here you can see it pulled in my market boundaries comments uh, the neighborhood information here I've got um, it's pulling in this information and calculating it for us uh, this one we preset and if there was prior sales it would uh, include those here uh, it says six comps analyzed in the range this is automatically generated and here's the three listed below um, here's the comments that are automatically generated uh, the range the values at the upper end of the range and the information about how we got it so 588 um, is the opinion here and on my um, on the listing over here it's listed at 588888 so I would say they've priced it appropriately so now we'll keep on going through here uh, we can fill in this uh, test put in whatever we want here and come on down uh, again some freeform text if we want put it in here uh, it populates this for us and everything looks good so I'm ready to sign it so I'll slide back up here and do the save and sign so we get a message here sign successful we can go down to the bottom and see it's there it's applied my signature and so now if we want to save that uh, that local copy we can do this and uh, so I'll go ahead and save this 
and we're done with that one. Now uh, a recent change with these once uh, the order is done it won't disappear from this list so the status has just changed from dispatch to signed <clears throat> and if I do want to go back and uh, and look at this in the future uh, can go ahead and do that and it'll pull it up here and you can see it's uh, kept my census tract information that I put in it's got my signature um, it's still got the oops, little custom comment I put here. And so that's all saved. So that's, uh, that's the Z-Val, the basic one. And so it's going to work similarly, although there will be more detail on the uh, 2055. So let's go ahead and look at that one. And so this is the, uh, the 1907 Boulder Drive, San Jose. And in the same way, we can first look at the the property itself don't have a a picture here but uh can take a look at that and the uh the scoring we've done and so again I can uh I can pull this up uh in the MLS if I've got that or any other information if I can uh if I can uh double check my scoring here so let me go ahead and do that so now when I went to look at it, uh, as I said, this is a hillside area and there weren't a lot of properties uh, in that market group. So what will happen when I try to generate the report here, we'll get a failure message, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, property not ready to generate, not enough comparables that I understand, and not modified live. Well, I couldn't find three comps. Uh, it was a a fairly small, less than 100 properties in that market group. So then on this one, this is uh, property we'll have to say is a, is a no hit, that uh, it's not uh, in an area that the Zayo products can, uh, can generate a value for. So let's go back to the, uh, the Sagewood property that we did the Z-Val for, and we'll just go ahead and uh, take a look at that for the uh, the 2055 service link and so we'll let that one generate here and then we can go through uh, like we did before review the information that's already in there and add anything we need to manually or any kind of customization we're going to do for the uh, for the order now I've waited a minute or two while I had it paused and even for this order generation which takes a while I'm thinking that something's not right so let's uh, try the clear cash that, uh, that I demonstrated earlier so we'll go to history clear all browsing data from the beginning of time empty the cash alright so we'll close that come back here to the preview order and click it again. We'll see if it'll generate this time. And sure enough, it did. So not positive, but that's just kind of a demonstration of what potentially could be a situation where you need to use that clear cache. It may have loaded some information or form stuff that it used for the, the Zval and didn't clear it out for whatever reason. So uh, not definitive, but, but that's the kind of situation where that clear cache might help. So here's our uh, 2055 Z kit for service link. And you can see again up at the top we've got the save and save and sign button. And so we can go through this, uh, take a look here. Uh, this, in this form, there is the census tract. This is an extended one. It looks like it's got the, the code for the, the state and the county or city there on top of the, the local one, and uh, I guess the GPS coordinates for the map reference. And so um, I can go through here and say it's going to be fee simple. This other CDS test order and so on. Go, go down the list here and review the information. 
Now on this one, since I went ahead on my MLS and uploaded some actives and pendings, uh, it found this and automatically populated the days on the market uh, offered and the uh, the listing number. So that's that's nice. So we'll keep going down here and can fill this in or whatever the appropriate comments are. Uh, can look at this as well if that's part of our scope of work. Um, you can see on the form here there's still some work to be done in terms of the layout, but that's pulling in the, the neighborhood boundaries. And Northwood Park uh, isn't the common name, I guess it's pulling that off of the the legal description. Um, calculating this during the 40s, that's probably true, although there was a lot of work done in the 60s too. Um, number of properties in the zip code and number of properties in the uh, in the market group, so it automatically generated this, but again we could uh, update or add to this, but uh, this is what's happening automatically. Um, some calculations here about uh, sales increasing, listing and absorptions. Uh, I don't think I would argue with that. Um, now I'm not sure why it's not picking this up. There certainly are uh, some foreclosures in here, but it's it's saying zero, so that may be worth investigating further. And so we can keep going down the. Uh, the form here. Uh, this is picking out our rating that we put in, 5 out of 10 for lot size and 5 out of 10 for view and we can uh, choose some of the UAD standards here from the drop downs. Check through this and determine if everything's okay and doesn't pull in the, the flood data as well, so I'll make a note of that here. And again, we'll keep going down through here. If we want to change any of this, we can. If we're able to observe this from the, uh, the drive-by, we can populate that. And if I'm worried about the stability of things, I can go ahead and hit Save here. Um, so again, if we come back to this, dispatched, here's the one that's, uh, that's saved, and we'll click this, and give it a minute to generate the report here for us. And then as you can see, the information we put in, or the changes we made those are uh, those are maintained here and pulling this from the fares data and just got it in the correct UAD format and this is a standard automatically generated comment um, I think the condition may be based on our ratings uh, but we may want to change that uh, even though I'm saying it's an 8 out of 10, it's probably a, a C3. So again, as you can see, we can uh, we can update those and and customize it based on our specific knowledge. And I paused it there, but I went ahead and did a save and then pulled this back up just to make sure that me overriding this C3 would uh, would stick, if you will. And so now we'll go ahead and go through the uh, the comps grid and it auto calculated this for us and pulled in a com our comps. Um, if you look down here the the value the 588 is the same as on the Zval it's just giving us more detail here in the 2055 format and so we can go through and look at this information and verification source uh, we can put that in and, and uh, fill in this piece based on uh, based on our public records data, for example. And going on down, it's uh, it's pulling in our 
sale date and contract date and formatting that correctly for the UAD. Showing the site size, I think this would have to come out to be UAD compliant uh, where it's put in our, our 5 out of 10 scoring there. Now on view here, uh, this may be allowed. It seems like on UAD you can have some, your own comments and it's pulling this in from our style information. Um, this quality of construction, not sure how that's calculated. Uh, condition, obviously, that's based on our condition rating. And coming on down, I'm, we don't have basements out here, but I'm assuming it would populate that if we've got it in, uh, got it in Validix. And perhaps the same same way for the heating cooling section. Um, here it doesn't have a number I guess just our, uh, S our rating and then this extras and amenities it's got our rating but uh, but no description so that would probably need to be updated before these things are are ready for uh, actual clients. But you can see the calculation here I've rated my subject an 8 and the comps of five and a uh, hundred thousand dollars total so that's ten thousand per step and there's three points or three steps difference between the five and the eight so that's adjusted as a thirty thousand in the positive direction um, gross living area calculations that's based on what I've got in Validix as well that's eighty dollars a, a square foot out here it looks like it's doing that calculation right and round into the the nearest hundred and here um, it's correctly selected this and one of the the comps uh, had previously sold and so we've got that uh, that in here although we may need to update the description of the the data source and we'll keep going and again uh, like we saw on the ZVAL some narrative that's put together by by the tool here we can read through that and make sure that's acceptable. Add our own additional comments if we want it. Scroll on through. Signature page and make sure that's all populated correctly. And here are some additional comps. And so we can go through those just like we did before and update them. Uh, this is to be completed. This um, uh, listings uh, that can be added here and the uh, the location map automatically generated for us and I guess photos if we've got them but uh, not currently being populated uh, again since I loaded some uh, some actives and pendings and stuff uh, it automatically calculated the uh, 1004 MC for us, and we can review that and make sure it's uh, make sure it's correct. Update any of this if we need it, and then come down to this pre foreclosure addendum that's required. And these have drop downs for most of these. We can go through the unemployment rate is one that uh, isn't pre populated, so we'll have to pull that up, and we can try that. Uh, employment. Uh, Google's pretty smart here. Predicted it and gave me a little chart. And for San Jose, looks like we're at about 9.1% uh, for May 2012 according to the BLS. So we can pull that over. 9.1 April 2012. And that goes down here. And again, you can go through and put these in or type whatever you want yourself. And once we're done and gone through and satisfied that uh, everything is as we want, you can hit the uh, save and sign. And then also 
we want to save a local copy we can do that. 